<laughs> this is Second Story Garage. I'm Quentin Young. I'm here with Seth, Seth Glear, all the way from Massachusetts, somewhere in Massachusetts that I hadn't heard of before. I'm from a sm- small town called Shelburne Falls, right. um, about a thousand people, but I call Northampton my home okay. in Western Mass. Uh huh. I no, I just I want to get this out of the way because yeah, you might get asked this a lot, but I have to ask it because there's a couple of uh, things in your bio that I have to ask about. You flirted with Katy Perry, you say. I like Please to say tell me about that. she flirted with me. Um, but I'm going out on a limb there. Were there witnesses? No. So she flirted with you? Yes. Continue. Um, there may have been witnesses, but I don't really know. I got to <laughs> Were they wearing badges? <laughs> they were probably security, right. yeah, taking me away. Right. But, but that's just one way of looking at it. Um, <laughs> Let's go with your way. Let's go with my way. What do you say to Katy Perry when she's flirting with you? I said it, hi, and um, and then I think I choked on my, my tongue. Um, As you would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to. I got really lucky and um, got nominated. You got well, I didn't. Not like that. But I got nominated for a Grammy award and uh, was able to go to the Grammy. So I saw her on the red carpet, and she's very tall. And well, I mean, then again, I didn't really set the bar very high. I'm a pretty short man, but um, I'm gonna. Stop talking yeah. right now. <laughs> with Katy Perry on the red carpet. Okay, once yeah. in a lifetime. Okay, so you uh, got expelled from your high school for playing music. Yes. Is that literally true? Well, I mean, that's a, again, that's my way of putting it. I were there I, witnesses? Yes, there were witnesses. Um, I've since apologized to the superintendent, and we're on much better terms now. That's good. But. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was just... I mean, indie- music is kind of working for you. So it's, you yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's going all right. I was just a really independent kid. I knew what I wanted to do really early on, which has a double-edged sword. And uh, so I got expelled because I was in study hall and I was playing my guitar, and which was somewhat disruptive. And then I decided to play, instead of just, like, shutting up, I um, wrote a protest song to my principal. You're such a badass. Uh, well, I would say punk ass kid. Punk Maybe ass. Punk ass, less badass. than badass. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it it's it serves me. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's working. And, but then you were you then you stood there and played it like, uh, like it's, you went out of your way to disrupt school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not my proudest moment. I've since mm-hmm. learned um, uh, a little bit of, um, I think adults call it tact. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah. I, I heard I heard they do call it that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know, but I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. So you have this ability to uh, write songs. You you, you write uh, beautiful songs with thoughtful lyrics that uh, really touch on universal themes, but from like a really personal mm-hmm. viewpoint. Yeah, is the way I'm taking. Now uh, you play, for example, a song called "Scars" for mm-hmm. us today. And uh, that's that's one of the songs that I'm thinking of when okay. when I when I th- so where did that come from? It, it's about it's like really kind of these things that happen in life over life. Yeah, kind of just kind of like take their toll on you maybe, but you gotta. It was work it. it was in, inspired by um, this conversation that I had a, with a friend of mine, and she had a, a tattoo um, on her on her arm, and it was. Um, it was actually covering up a, a, a scar from from a, a time when uh, she uh, was dealing with depression and um, dealing with other things, and and I I guess it was just an interesting metaphor for me to to try to chase down about how um, oftentimes the things that that uh, um, that cause us a lot of grief are also sometimes the things that that make us pretty remarkable as individuals, mm-hmm. um, and it's just that reckoning with that and and getting to know yourself. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's kind of where that 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 song comes from. Cool tune. Let's do a real quick plug. You have an album, new album, yeah. fourth one. It is. Yeah, uh, coming out uh, in a month. What's mm-hmm. it called? It's called If I Could Change One Thing. Uh, it's coming out on April seventh uh, on Empress Records, and um, it was is sort of quite a quite a Quite um quite a work of, of in the making. Um, I, I I wrote a hundred hundred songs in preparation of the album. About 
80 of those sucked. But um, we ended up recording... You get 20 good tunes, though. That's, yeah, that's all right. Good. And we ended up recording 12 of them um, with this incredible producer uh, named Bill Leffler yeah, out in yeah. Los Angeles. And he's worked with Ingrid Michaelson and Dashboard Confessional and just some great artists. And it was a real just kind of collaborative experience. I'm, I'm excited about it. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So um, we ask all our artists to bring us something to decorate the set. Um, this, I believe, is a uh, some sort of percussion uh, yes. implement. It used it, or or it can really be whatever you want it to be, depending on you know the day. What else might you uh, depend? <laughs> it almost sounds like, like a voodoo doll. Like it, it, you can do. I can pretty much do most of the things I do. Well, let's have a listen. With what that. would you What would you do with that? I, I mean that. Yeah. yeah, I could listen to that all day. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, and 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 in this in the uh, uh, going with the theme of nuts, um, we had a we had quite a little. It's, it's so this, disgustingly this is, sticky. This, I don't know why it's sticky, but this is Cassie Taylor's nutsack. Cassie Taylor was one of our guest artists here. And this has been sitting in our studio for a very long time, like years. I don't know her. But we're going we're gonna to see if these nuts are still edible. What do you They're think? They're fun. I mean, what'd you get? I got an almond. I don't know my nuts. Do you know what kind of nut this is? That's an almond. Seth knows his nuts. What is this? That's from Brazil nut. <laughs> They're good. Did you try one? These are, these are really good. <laughs> Go ahead. You get one more. I'm going to get the rest. Two them. more. Cassie Taylor's nuts are still fresh. Bag nut, the sack not so much. The sack's no, a little sp- the sack is really sticky, as a sack might be if it were sweaty or something. Yep. Mm. <clears throat> Yum. But the nuts <clears throat> are fine. <coughs> as long as you don't choke on them. Yeah. And get them caught in your throat. So we're going to continue eating Cassie Taylor's nuts. This is Second Story Garage. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Cassie. All right. Thank you, Cassie.